Good morning. It is 7.45. I'm here in the Valley of the Gods in southeastern Utah. I didn't sleep very well last night. I was pretty cold and really I was excited for today. Today is the start of a two-day kayaking trip. My friend Dennis arrived last night. his minivan next to my RAV4. I think he's still asleep. Yeah, this should be an interesting trip. Neither of us has ever kayaked for more than about an hour or an hour and a half before. <laughs> I still need to do some packing this morning and um, I need to eat and everything and and then we'll be ready to go, probably probably in an hour or so. Uh, we'll be ready to hit the road and boy, it's cold. It's gonna be cold on the river. I'm not really looking forward to that part of it. Here's our closest neighbor. Here's Monument Valley out here. I won't be going to on this trip. I've been there before. It's expensive to get in. It's like 20 bucks, 10 or 20 bucks. And I don't want to spend that on this trip. You can't really do much there. You go there and you can do like one hike and drive around a loop and that's basically it. They don't really want you to do much more than that. Beautiful morning. Here's Dennis emerged from the Siena camper. We haven't seen each other in what, six years? Yeah, since uh, ancient art. Oh yeah. That was the last time. We climbed a really famous uh, desert tower near Moab. That was the last thing we did together. I'll post some pictures of that right now. Got a nice little <laughs> breakfast, I guess, uh, what do you call this? A chuck box kind of thing. So this is part of my bed once this is all folded out. Oh yeah? I can show you the whole thing and... Very cool. Dennis lives in Grand Junction, which is about an hour and a half from Moab. It's what, a four hour drive here? Yeah. And we used to be climbing buddies, we used to go rock climbing together, but he moved and then I moved and then the stars didn't realign until, until this trip. We've got an egg burrito for breakfast. <laughs> I'm sort of a gourmet, as you can tell. More than I am. I a pop tart for breakfast. <laughs> I just recorded a video walkthrough of Dennis's adventure mobile, so you can expect that in the future. I'm really impressed with how easily it comes together and how, how um, I guess, quickly it can go from, from a minivan to an adventure vehicle. It's 9.04, we've got the cars packed, and we are ready to go, ready to hit the road. We're going to both drive to the takeout point at Mexican Hat. We're going to drop off Dennis's car. Then we'll hop into my car to drive to the put-in point on the river. I've got both kayaks on my roof and we'll start from there. We are at the Mexican Hat boat launch just outside of the little town of Mexican Hat. Our two cars are the only ones here and we're leaving Dennis's. There's a toilet and a dumpster. And here's the river, the San Juan River. This is where we'll be taking out sometime tomorrow, late tomorrow. Man, it is cold in the shade. This is going to be a cold trip. 
Beautiful river though, very silty. I'm excited. This will be a fun trip. So we're pulling into the Sand Island boat launch area. We are 20, I think 27 river miles upstream from Mexican Hat. We're gonna put in here, then float down to Mexican Hat, arriving sometime, I presume late tomorrow. We're getting our stuff ready at the boat launch here. And I saw that there were a few deer out in the river. All right, it is 1140. We're getting a little bit of a later start and the water is looking brown. <laughs> looking good. Looking brown. Looking brown. Here she is, my trusty vessel, all packed up. Here's Dennis's, his looks a bit more uh, legit, I think. Well, I don't know if the buckets are legit, but well, should work. You don't have stuff strapped like <laughs> I do to mine. Dennis is going first. I'm sinking. <laughs> Auspicious start to this, <laughs> this two day adventure. <laughs> Need help putting it in? Maybe. Oh, oh, here we go. Does she float? I certainly hope so. <laughs> My foot's stuck in the mud. There we go. Such grace. Yes. Thank you for documenting this <laughs> process for me. Push here. And he's away. My turn. And we are on the river. I got stuck on the rocks back there. De Dennis is stuck back there right now. Beautiful river here. I've got my little faux pro on this long clamp. I can swivel this around. I have uh, in my bag here, I have a selfie stick and a, a head mount for the faux pro. And then I have the camera and mini tripod that I'm recording this on. This water is like chocolate milk or coffee. And it's fun to see the desert from a different yeah. viewpoint. Yeah. Every time I get on a river, I'm reminded of just how fun it is. Like, this is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to just sit here and be carried somewhere. It's not like that with hiking or rock climbing. So peaceful. So we're looking for Moki steps somewhere on this cliff. Moki steps are steps that the Native Americans cut into the cliff so that they could climb up the cliff. They're like, well, steps, like stairs. They cut cut stairs into the uh, into the cliff. Except they're much smaller than than stairs. All right, we have docked our craft, a watercraft. And we saw from the river some Moki steps. We're gonna go check those out. 
or up river here somewhere. This is as close as we could get to them. We saw them from the river, but I wasn't quick enough on the camera draw to um, to film them from the river. So we're going up to them on foot. It's a faint trail heading over to the steps here. So we found some petroglyphs on the wall over here. But before we get to those, we stumbled across some some pottery, some Native American pottery. You can see there's some pottery shards, I guess. It's a line drawn on that one. You can see pattern on this one. Pretty cool. And here's some more. Beautiful. It's all over the ground here. Of course, you're not supposed to take any if you come across it. That's really bad juju and it's illegal. Wow, these are beautiful. Jeez. Let's take a closer look at these. Got some faint ones down low here. These up higher. Like someone playing a flute right there, maybe. Yeah. There are a lot down low here too at about head level. And then there are these four holes. Don't know what they're for. Don't know if they were made by the Native Americans or if they came later. If the holes came later. So here's the first set of Moki steps. These are some smaller ones. I guess there must have been like a granary or something up there. Or maybe they just wanted to get on top of this cliff and get up there to hunt or do whatever. So there are these ones here and then a couple more over in this area. Looks like there are three lines of them here. There's this one, yeah. this one, and then this one. These are big steps. They're almost like stairs. There's some white spots on the rock and the patina of the rock right there. I don't know if those are bullet holes or if they were pecked in there by the Native Americans. There's Dennis trying to get down. Please don't fall, Dennis! Yeah. I just noticed that there were some more petroglyphs up here and over here. There's this little mound here with tons of pottery pieces, pottery shards on it. So we just finished up with this little detour to the Moki Steps and the, uh, and the rock art. It was super cool. Definitely worth doing. We're gonna hop back on the river now. Away! This is extremely pleasant. Isn't it? I was a little concerned, and I am happily surprised. Yeah, me too. Like, just 
enjoyable. It's just fun. Like, it's, it's just, just fun, fun nice yeah. To do. Like, it's, it's not like extreme and challenging. No. And adrenaline. It's just pleasant. Not scary. Yeah. Hey, we've just spotted a petroglyph panel up here, so we're gonna go check that out if we can get there. Okay, the brush was too thick. The trees were too thick up against the bank back there, so we went downstream a little bit. I'm gonna try to get off right here. Here's Dennis doing something. I don't know, I'm sort of stuck on a on one piece right underneath me. I'm pivoting around. <laughs> <laughs> What the heck is going on? There we go. Oh, nope. Oh, <laughs> I gotta go back further. <laughs> Almost. Just sick. get out. What are you doing? Oh, wait. <laughs> Forgot about that. We're basically professional river guides. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Um. I think we're in the clear. Almost. Ah. Oh. Success. So we found this nice little trail. We're following it to, I'm not quite sure what. I believe there is a cliff dwelling back in here somewhere, at least. Actually, I think there are, are a few. We've got some good ones here my hand for scale. This says 1890 M bash, something like that. Again, here's my hand for scale. Some more. And it says something 1887. This one's kind of creepy looking, but also very cool. This whole stretch of cliff band has petroglyphs along it. This is a pretty cool one. I don't know what, what this is. Aliens, probably. There's some guys riding these animals. This is unique. They've worn these four grooves into the rock. And again, there are, there's rock art all along this thing, all along this cliff. So down here are the most prominent and possibly more recent petroglyphs, but above them, there's this layer of much older looking ones, much more faded. I don't know if you can see these. There have got to be thousands of, of images here total. Yeah. This is the largest, the longest panel I've ever seen. And just keeps going. Okay, this is really interesting. So we've got Looks like someone with a gun, maybe a cowboy hat. Here's someone with an arrow, bow and arrow. Here's someone else with a gun. Here's someone with an arrow through their head. And his cowboy hat is on the floor, on the ground next to him.
So I think the petroglyphs probably kept going. They're probably all over this place, but we're heading back to the kayaks now. I'm gonna push on down river and there's a, there's a ruin, a Native American ruin we want to go see. It's supposed to be pretty impressive. Back on the river now. Dennis is eating his peanut butter and jelly burrito. About to have a crash. Yeah, about to crash. Dennis going backwards down the rapids over here. So this river is super shallow. It's uh, like right here. It's about a foot deep. I think the deepest I've I've seen it here is about four feet deep. I stuck I keep sticking my paddle in occasionally. Very shallow river. It's a very sandy bottom. There are more Moki steps I just saw somewhere. Left of the crack. Oh yeah, there they are. And it's so shallow that we've each gotten stuck a few times. I think me more than him on the uh, on the shallow little sandbars or on rocks in the river. So we're downstream a little bit and we found this sign for Butler Wash Panel. There's still more petroglyphs. This is De Dennis's anchor. Is this your knife? <laughs> <laughs> I did not see this earlier. but we passed by this. This is um, used to be a trading post in the 1880s. A guy, a uh, European settler guy, ran this place and traded with the, the Navajo in the area. Not much left to it. And then after him it was the, uh, the cowboys. This was a cowboy outpost of some sort. We think this was the the remains of a water wheel that used to take water up to the the trading post over here. There's not much to it now though. So we walked about 10 minutes up from the river to this really cool ruin here. This is called a river house. This is not the best time of day to come here because of the, the harsh shadows and light. It's still really cool though. 
There's a register the dentist is signing, and an ammo can, and there are a couple of grinding holes for grinding corn or beans or whatever it is that they ground here. This dwelling is situated so that it gets direct sunlight in winter, but is shaded in the summer. There's this big old snake painted above the ruin. Some swirls too. A little piece of corn down here. We just finished up visiting River House Ruin. That was super cool. It was really neat how you could see the uh, like the little pieces of corn still there. I didn't see any pottery. Did you see any pottery pieces? No. Uh, we didn't really look, I don't think we, I didn't really look around very hard for it. But that was neat and seeing the, uh, the pictographs was cool. It is 4.30 now. We took off four hours and 40 minutes ago. And it's uh, getting late in the day so we're gonna we're walking back to the kayaks and we're going to find a place to camp. Hopefully in the next hour or so, next hour or so on the river, we can find a, find a good campsite. Dennis and I have been kind of moseying down the river today. We haven't really been paddling, except when we need to stay straight or go somewhere to avoid rocks or sandbars or rapids. But uh, we've gone seven and a half miles today. So we have about 20 miles left for tomorrow. We're gonna try to get a few more miles in today. So we're actually gonna start paddling. So we found a campsite. It's not the prettiest campsite in the world. It's back behind here. We needed to stop because the river goes into the canyon up here and the rapids start and so this is basically the last spot we could feasibly camp at before the canyon. So we're gonna move our stuff up and then uh, get ready for the night, settle into camp. This is our miserable little campsite. <laughs> it's the best we could find before the canyon. It's just kind of a clearing in the riparian vegetation along the river here. Done worse. Yeah, definitely done worse. This is what we've got so far. We're just uh, taking a break to eat. We haven't set up tents or anything. Just trying to get our feet dry and relax. This is our sleeping setup for tonight. This is my bivy sack over here. And this is Dennis's bivy sack over here. If you don't know what a bivy sack is, it's basically just a waterproof sleeping bag cover. It's 6.45 right now. The sun has gone behind the hills over there. And we have several hours to kill before uh, it's bedtime, so. We're going to kill several hours before bedtime doing something. Dennis just started a fire in our little fire pan with this little <laughs> torch. 
torch. I sort of feel like it's cheating. Yeah, this torch lighter that I brought. I got a four pack of these on Amazon for like $8 with prime shipping. They're great little lighters. One of the camping regulations on the river is that you need to use a fire pan of some sort. And so I bought this. This is just a, an aluminum pie pan. But I got it because it was the smallest thing I could find that fulfilled the requirements. It had to be like 12 inches in diameter, 13 inches in diameter or something. And then an, and, uh, an inch and a half high on the sides. You have to feed this thing constantly. Yeah, Swear seriously. Tiny. We have lots of these little sticks, but nothing bigger. There are bigger pieces of dead wood around, but we don't have an axe or a saw or anything like that. Also, our river sandals are wet and sandy. So I put socks on and then put stuff sacks around my socks and I have dry, dry feet here by the fire. You couldn't tell neither Dennis nor I are kayak, kayaksmen. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like the right term. Yeah, that sounds about right. This is our first kayaking trip and we both hike and climb and you know, we've gone backpacking, you know, we go backpacking and tennis mountain bikes a lot. We both camp in our cars a lot. But uh, we're new to this world of kayak camping, so note to self, next time bring some camp shoes. What are you going to use for camp shoes, Dennis? Uh, well, I'm going to follow your idea. I'm just, uh, I don't have a shoe-shaped stuff sack, so <laughs> check back with me in a minute. Okay. We have a little pile of sticks here that'll last us for maybe Three more minutes. <laughs> so it's 9.45. Dennis and I have been awake for about an hour. <clears throat> I slept pretty well last night. I think I tossed and turned and changed my position every few hours. I think Dennis had a little bit more of a rough time than I did. We're just packing up camp and waiting for it to get a little bit warmer before we get on the river. It got below freezing last night. Our, uh, there was some some ice in our water jugs this morning when we woke up. We're not really going to be stopping today to see any ruins or Native American sites. There aren't really any. That was all yesterday. Uh, today we're just going to be paddling on the river and there are four rapids, four main sets of rapids that we're going to be going to be going through. We have about 16 and a half miles on the river to go. We, we went 10 and a half miles yesterday. Any thoughts, Dennis? <clears throat> Looking forward to it. Yeah. Probably finish in four hours without stopping. Gonna get wet. Should be fun. Yeah, yesterday we didn't really get wet. There were some little ripples, but no real rapids. I think today we are gonna get wet, especially since our kayaks aren't super nimble. Uh, we kind of have to go where the current takes us in a lot of places, so I think we're going to be going places where we don't necessarily want to go, and I think that means we're going to be wet at some point. Okay, it's 10.30, and we are mostly all packed up and ready to go. Got a few things strapped to the front here, most of my stuff strapped to the back, then a few things inside also. Dennis has most of his stuff in these two buckets strapped to the back of his sit-on-top kayak. He's got some other storage in this little cubby hole right here and some more in this cubby right here. Getting in and out is a bit tricky, especially on these faster moving sections. I'll wait here for you. Okay. I feel like I want to put a seat belt on. <laughs> Alright, we're going to be going through canyons for most of today. I can hear some nice little ripples up ahead. Should be a fun day.
Definitely got soaked on that one. So Dennis and I just went through our first set of rapids, first set of real named rapids. Those were four foot rapids, that's what they were called. Got quite a bit of water inside the kayak, but I have this tiling or grouting sponge from Home Depot that was about $2. And uh, it's really great for, for bailing the water out. There was a lot more than this. I've been bailing already for quite a little while. We'll be going through three sets of named rapids today. The first ones were, again, four foot rapids. The second ones are eight foot rapids, so presumably they're twice as intense. I don't know. And then uh, ledge rapids, I believe, is the third set. Definitely got wet. My, uh, my shorts and my shirt are wet. I think Dennis fared about the same. It was a lot of fun though. It's a nice day, but um, there's a bit of a wind, so it is a little bit chilly being wet. I'm not so chilly that I need my jacket out or anything like that, but you know, it's a, it's a bit cool. And this is the beautiful canyon that we're we are floating down. This is looking back up the canyon. This is such a fun, such a fun little adventure. This is so great. Got some mountain goats. Or actually these are bighorn sheep along the riverbank here. Interesting, this gray rock down lower is all limestone, and above that, the reddish stuff is all sandstone. We're getting to this area with this low, these low wavy cliffs along the side down here on the bottom. We've been going for about an, an hour and 23 minutes. So far so good, right Dennis? Good. So far so good. It's been a lot of fun. In between the big rapids, in between the three named rapids are smaller little little ripples they're a lot of fun so on the other side on the other side of this here is the next set of rapids so we're going to go around like this and as we start to turn back right we're going to hit the rapids eight foot rapids Dennis and I just went through eight foot rapids. It was pretty good. I, um, I took a line to the left, which was very shallow, kind of butt dragging. My uh, kayak kept hitting rocks along the bottom. Dennis took a more direct route through some bigger waves. Uh, he got more wet than I did, but uh, yeah, that was, that was really fun. And then we are coming up here on the Narrows. That's what this section is called. Now this part definitely has a Grand Canyon feel to it. It's a little bit wider. Really pretty. We're coming up on our third and final set of rapids now. It's called Ledge Rapids. I think it's just uh, kind of around the bend in the river here.
Ah, oh, here we go. Oh. I don't know what happened. Guess I'll see on the I video. Went completely underwater on that. Like Woo! <laughs> That was quite the adventure. I went down somewhere over here. Boat got swamped. I was able to swim over to here and uh, tip the water out. It's cold water. I'm glad it's warm and sunny today. Canyon has definitely opened up now. You can see some even more uh, canyon rim areas beyond. So up ahead here we have the Mexican Hat Rock Formation. It's a really it's pretty well named and just odd rock formation just outside of the town of Mexican Hat. So we're maybe two or three miles now from the takeout spot on the river. I've actually climbed Mexican Hat before. There's a technical rock climbing route that goes up the side of it and I'll post some pictures of that here. I think we might be nearing the end. It's a group of rafters here. All right guys, we have successfully disembarked. We are off the river. Dennis went up to, um, to the, he walked up to the town of Mexican Hat to get his car. He paid uh, one of the businesses there $10 to be able to park it there for two days. Apparently if you park it here that, um, you know, people could break into your car and, and things like that. So he's going up to get that. We've moved the kayaks up here to make them easier to put into the van. And man, what a great trip. I mean, this was... It was basically everything I hoped it would be. It was so much fun. It was great um, hanging out with Dennis again. You know, it's been several years since we've had an adventure together. It was great to go on my first kayak camping trip. It was great seeing all those Native American things yesterday, especially the pottery and the Moki steps. I've never seen those before. That was really fun. Today was full of adventure, you know, going through the, the three sets of rapids and then coming out of the boat at the one rapid getting swamped. All part of the adventure, all really fun. Uh, I had a, such a good time on this trip. I really enjoyed it. I don't know about Dennis, but I, I definitely think that there will be more kayak camping trips in my future. I had a great time and I hope you guys did too. I hope you enjoyed the video. I think this is gonna be a really good video, assuming all of my SD cards survived getting wet, uh, survived the plunge. Uh, I think that the this, is, this will be a really interesting trip, so. I know I enjoyed it, I hope you did too. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your favorite part of the trip was and let me know, as always, if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.